All right. Welcome, Amplify You. Hey, everyone. Michelle Abraham, your host here again. I'm bringing you guys an Ask the Expert interview. Now, I went far and wide to find this expert for you. I went all the way down to California, met her in person, actually by the poolside. It was very lovely. <laughs> but today, I'm bringing you Dr. Cynthia Bukhara. She has been working with industry thought leaders over the last 30 years. So Cynthia really helps them not only lead happier, healthier lives, but to use their bodies to project confidence, credibility, and charisma, which is why we're bringing here here to talk to you guys today about podcasting. So organizing such organizations such as the Olympic Athletes America's Cup teams, Dell Software, Southern California's Edison, uh, bring her in to elevate their leaders and executive presence and inspire their teams. So, so cool. Entrepreneurs as well look to Dr. Cynthia to help them have a presence they need on stage or online to connect with their audience, make an impact they want, and to create the income they deserve. Now, that's what we all want. So welcome, Dr. Cynthia. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Michelle. I'm delighted to be here with you. Awesome. Well, it's so exciting what we're going to talk about today. I think uh, you work with so many thought leaders uh, on helping them with their stage presence. So guys, if you've been to conferences and you've seen those guys up on stage, you know the work that they've done in the background. A lot of them have been to Dr. Cynthia to help the, for her to help them really get ready for this. So how can you be on stage and be present and be confident? These are the things we're going to talk about today, as well as when you guys go on to shows to be a guest, how can you um, convey your signature talk in a really great way that's going to lead people back to your show as well? So, Dr. Cynthia, let's dive in. Let's tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I, I believe that as leaders, the most important thing that we can do to influence people, whether it be one-on-one, -on, -one, on a podcast, um, online or doing a, a talk in front of folks, the most important thing that we must do is to connect. Mm -hmm. And connection does not happen from the neck up. <laughs> connection happens at the heart and it happens at the level of the body because 93% of what we're communicating when we're with humans, other mm -hmm. humans, it's not the words. And we get so stuck on those words. And, uh, you know, I often work with folks like uh, entrepreneurs right now, people who are really famous, but mostly people who are want to have a reputation and be known and make a difference. And they get frustrated because they can't communicate and make the impact or have the influence that they want. Like their message isn't landing or it looks like they're not getting the sales or they're, the people that work for them are not doing what they need to. And, you know, I, also folks that have a big opportunity and they need to bring it. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me so much, one of my clients named Betty, she works with folks that, um, uh, organizations to help them put in programs to avoid suicide, so suicide prevention. Mm -hmm. And it, this, is, this mission is so close to, her, just like, you know, probably everyone on this podcast mission is close to them because of something we've all experienced and her, both of her brothers committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so she was asked by the Department of Defense to come and do a presentation on suicide prevention. And Michelle, I don't know if you know this, but suicide in the military, at least in mm -hmm. the U.S. and perhaps even in Canada, that suicide is at the highest level it has ever been. And so that's, you know, that's like when you have to bring it. Mm -hmm. And so it's these times like that, that we need to be focused and we need to have our attention and we need to have the power and energy to do that. And I, I you know, I like to think of, uh, if you've ever watched a National Geographic, you know, and you've seen that a picture of like a lioness mm -hmm. and she's just hunting for her prey, right? Mm -hmm. And she's just focused. She's connecting right in there, not only with, with what she wants and that prey, but she's connecting with her own self. And it's, she's got the, all this preparation and it's happened naturally, you know, and she's got to get that gazelle, otherwise she will perish. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you imagine, we are those lionesses, our business mm -hmm. will perish if we don't get the gazelle. Now, we don't eat our clients. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> we don't eat our clients. 
but but that same level of intensity of connection and focus and power and energy is what we have to have if we're ever going to get like true connect true communication if they're ever going to even hear the message you know we've got the enemy we have is noise it's our distractions it's the distractions they walk into the communication with or it's like what we're doing with all of this <laughs> that causes so much noise that uh, we don't we don't get the outcome that we're looking for. My we gosh, the difference! Amazing, yeah. And you know, it's the difference between going on stage with that focus and that preparation, and not it could be like the end of you know, like for your client, like that's people's lives at stake there, yes. depending on how prepared you are, right? And making sure that message lands in the people who you're speaking to. I think that's so powerful. And I think maybe some people in the podcasting industry maybe forgotten that just because we're behind a microphone and oftentimes on audio, we can't still have that same connection. And in fact, I think that connection is amplified because it's through your earbuds, which is you're in someone's head already. <laughs> so Dr. Cynthia, do you have some advice for us as podcasters that maybe we're not on camera, but in voice only? How can we really make sure that message lands? Well, I think I always look at it like, you know, anytime, just go back to that analogy. Anytime a lioness goes out to hunt, like no matter where it's at, that's, a, that's an event. It's to be taken seriously. And she has to bring everything she has to that mm -hmm. moment. Otherwise, it's so easy for it to slip away. And when we're, when we're podcasting, whether it's in video form or whether it's purely audio, we have to have that same level of attention and mindfulness to attention and intention to what we're doing. And when you're online and when it's a voice only, Boy, you got to bring it. You can't, because you don't have all this. You don't have all this body thing. Like my, you don't see the smile. You don't feel the connection. You have to bring it with your voice. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be even better at that. Mm -hmm. You have to bring that energy, you know? So just at the first thing I would say, there's three things I think are really important as I think about it for podcasters is you got to bring that focus and energy mm -hmm. and you have to be able to, because all they're doing is hearing your voice, boy, you need to be good at that. Because God, is there just nothing worse than listening to somebody who speaks like this and they're very much in their head and they're kind of reading their content and there's no inflection in their voice. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that would get turned <laughs> off. <laughs> exactly, you're turned off. You wanna die. You're, oh, and, and that dying, you're just gonna flip. <laughs> They're just going to go somewhere else, you know? So we have to be good on, on the other side, boy, I know that you've seen a, um, oh God, no, I'm, uh, I'm missing his name. The African-American guy that played God. How come I can't think of his name? Morgan you know? Freeman? Yes, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Thank you. Morgan Freeman. Like, he's so good. Cool. <laughs> couldn't you just listen to him? read mm. the telephone book and be mesmerized. Mm. Yeah, he's incredible. <laughs> right. So his voice just wraps you mm. in, in the power and his presence. And he can take you on this amazing emotional ride just mm -hmm. with his voice. And so podcasters can do that, but they have to have that intention. They need to be able to work their instrument, like our bodies, mm. our voice. It's an instrument. If you don't know how to play the guitar, and you're going to go into a concert playing your guitar, mm -hmm. you're singing the song and you're singing the words, right? The words are coming out, but boy, you better know how to play that instrument. Mm. And so that makes so much sense. Yeah. yeah. With especially the, the enunciation and, and if you, and for those of you watching this video right now, I know a lot of you are listening, but I actually stand for every episode because I can get more in, more energy from my voice and use my hands is much easier from behind my desk. Yeah, you're exactly right, Michelle. If you ever watch people doing voiceovers, like actors, mm -hmm. I love watching that, you know, when they're, when they're these famous actors and they're doing a Disney film or a Pixar film mm -hmm. and they're in there and they're like, literally like the mic is there and their whole body is doing it and they're standing. They would never, ever 
think of just sitting behind a desk and trying to animate their voice. So yeah, that's for sure. You gotta, you gotta use your instrument, which is you stand, you breathe from the belly, you, you learn how to do pauses. You know, I'd say there's five F's um, or five P's for voice. You know, you gotta pause, you need to punch certain things. It's about your pace, it's about your pitch, um, and it's about your power. And you just, you work those things like it is your craft. Mm -hmm really practicing them too, you know, and slowing down, speeding up. I think those are so, so important. Do you think those are things that we should be practicing? Um, as obviously, as we are recording interviews, they are getting better. We're recording episodes solo, they're getting better. Are those some things that we should be doing outside of our um, shows as well? Such a good question. And, you know, life, uh, William Shakespeare said that all the world's a stage. Mm -hmm. And I, I always recommend to my clients that they think of every human encounter, every opportunity that you're speaking with somebody is an opportunity to get better at being able to connect and communicate with people. So mm -hmm. when you're speaking to your spouse, hey, honey, would you get the trash? What about if you just changed it into what I call like a honey voice and go, hey, honey, would you mind getting the trash for me, please? Like, connect in there, you know, nobody wants to be all authority or all playful or only mm. focused. You want to like dance in between those. Mm. And so it did you, sound like you were dancing in that statement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to, you know, like use those opportunities as a uh, ability to advance your, your capacity to connect and communicate. Mm, I love that. Now we went off a little, I, I took you on a little bit of a, a tangent over here. What was number three? <laughs> uh, the number three was uh, to use your instrument, to use your, use your instrument. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Exactly. To, like it is, uh, it is serious. Mm -hmm. um, like use your whole body. It's not just your voice. It's, it's as you mentioned so perfectly, like you mm -hmm. stand, you move your body, mm -hmm. you, ha you move your hands because it's been shown in research that people with more complicated thinking have more complicated hand gestures. And mm -hmm. so it is part and parcel of that communication to move your hands. If they don't see it, it's okay, but it's still, it's, it is like the carrier wave of, of the connection and the communication. Interesting. Now I'm a head nodder. So for people listening, they can't see my head nodding and I want to say, mm hmm and ha, ah, yeah, but I feel like that's kind of interrupting my guests sometimes or then, you know, then it's not, then it sounds kind of funny. So what do you suggest that we do to help engage with our guests? Like during those moments where you want to say, mm hmm, ah, should we hold ourselves back from doing that or still connect in that same way as you would in person? Michelle, it's such a good question. And I think that it really depends on what kind of a space you want to create in your show. Some people really like that connecting dialogue type mm -hmm. of an approach. And so if you listen to somebody like Lewis Howes or Joe Rogan, they're just always bantering back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. one way. Another way is if you listen to like impact theory, he's mm -hmm. much more about letting that person just go you know, and then he'll make an occasional, it, it is, a, um, it's also a video, but mm -hmm. occasionally he'll ask a question or do something, but he wants to really highlight that person. Right. I would say that as a, as a podcaster, as somebody who is developing their thought leadership, because that's why we do Absolutely. things like this, right? <laughs> um, in the final analysis, it's, it's about you. It's about your perspective. They're coming to hear your point of view. And your point of view is con conveyed by the people that you have, but it's also conveyed by how you interact with them and the questions you ask that you think are important. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think that you, the best way is to set it up in, in advance and let your speaker know, let your expert be aware of how you run your podcast. I like this to be very interactive. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I'm going to ask you a question and then I'm going to expect that you complete a, a sentence or a thought and then you take a break so that mm -hmm. we can interact and I can follow the thread of what I think my listeners will be most uh, compelled by. 
Mm, that's a great idea. Yeah. And that way, like, cause you know, we have some guests that come on that will, I haven't had this experience, but I, I, we edit a lot of shows. So we hear, we hear a lot of shows. There are some guests that come on that like, will you know, you ask them a question and they'll run on for 20 minutes and then you're like, okay, that's it. No, thank you. <laughs> and that makes it kind of awkward. <laughs> Yeah. And I think, you know, as experts, sometimes we might have a tendency to do that because we're just like, we're so excited about yeah. what we know and we want to share it so much right. and we want to tell everybody and then holy cow, it's 20 minutes later. <laughs> you yeah, know? We're used to being on the stage where that is what we do on the stage. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So, but I, I believe that if you give people a heads up and say, hey, I want this to be a dialogue and mm -hmm. I want the capacity to kind of like take this in a direction that I think is going to be most impactful for my listeners. Mm -hmm. So, and just let them know, hey, listen, if it turns out that you you just get this thought and you just keep going, please don't be offended if I interrupt you. Mm, that's a good because idea. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help us stay on track with, with, fine tuning this to, to the people that I serve. Right. And then, the, and then people are not going to say no, or, and if they do, you just say, well, we're probably not a good fit. Yeah. <laughs> this might be awkward now then. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I like that. That's really great advice for, you know, getting prepared for your show, just some great conversation to have with your guests ahead of the time. And then now, uh, now let's flip, flip the switch where now our hosts are now going out and being guests on other shows, which often happens. And so we're so used to being in the, in the, in the, the host role. I was actually on a podcast the other day where, um, all of a sudden I started interviewing the host because right. <laughs> I'm so used to it. And I was like, oh, wait a second, you're supposed to be interviewing me, but this kind of turned a funny way. <laughs> and she was totally fine with that. We laughed about it and it was good, but you know, so we, we want to co convey our personal story and our signature talk in a way that we want to captivate their audience and bring them back over to our show with us. So right. what are some best practices for us to think about when we're doing that? Oh, I recommend that everyone have a signature talk and a signature talk. Sometimes that can sound like this big, like, ah, a big elephant, like, oh, I'm never going to get this quote unquote signature talk. <laughs> and I have felt that way too. But th there are a couple of things that you want to focus on. Three things actually you must focus on. The first is that your opening needs to be powerful. And I believe that your opening whether you get asked the question like you asked me, tell us a little bit about yourself. I like to say a little bit about myself via what I believe, you know, and then I will later on try to work in because they often say, well, how did you get to where you're at? You know, it's a common question. And then you can give a little bit of the story. But you, you have to nail that first couple of minutes that you're talking with people. Right. So the introduction right. that you have, and if you start out with something that grabs people, you know, like when you're doing a, a, a podcast, you're going to have an intro. You had an intro when you start, when you uh, began your thing and you want that to always be the same. So you want to have your response to that first question memorized. I don't like to memorize much, but I do like to memorize that first little bit. Mm -hmm. And I like the second part is memorize that last little bit, you know, so it. memorize how you want to, to finish it up. And it can be something as simple as a quote. It can be something as simple as, you know, taking what you do. So, you know, helping entrepreneurs be more powerful in their communication is what I do. Mm -hmm. allowing them profoundly to connect with the people that they can help is who I am. So mm -hmm. that's an, like, like you can do something that is, is a little bit revealing about you, but also a little bit emotional, like it's a connecting to them. Mm -hmm. And then the third piece is the, is, is the sandwich piece. It's like, mm -hmm. so you got one piece of bread, one piece of bread. And in the middle, you've got everything that's important for you to, share with people it's like your message your data your your pillars of your process you know the three key things that they can avoid or so have that be so that it comes trippingly off of your tongue and then you can weave that in while you know while you're doing that so so you can make a signature talk be uh, literally three minutes or you can make a signature talk be 90 minutes 
That's really great. I've seen how you've done that in this conversation so far where you had like the five, the five P's, which was great. And you know, the three ways of doing that. And now again, three things. So like having little media chunks, how many of those you, do you suggest that we have there? And there's a, there's a reason behind having these little chunks of a content really available at your fingertips in your mind <laughs> so that you can convey them because the media also really likes pulling, pulling out things like that. And as a podcast editor, what we're looking for is some media, a quick little grab that we can grab of 15, 20 seconds of content that we can put on an audiogram for our clients so we can market their show. So that's a really great, really great thing to have in uh, as a guest when you're on other shows. So what, what are some, what are some other, like other, how many of those should we be having? Well, here's what, here's, here's the secret tip. <laughs> I love your secret tips. <laughs> secret tips is everybody who's a podcaster also probably, and if they don't, they should have some kind of a business behind it. Mm -hmm. And in that business, they're going to have a process. They're going to have a, a, we call, you know, you could call it a proprietary process. You could call it a template. You could call it a framework. You could call it, I call it a formula. You know, we are all going to have this way that we take people from being in pain and then through this process of interacting, engaging with them, that we're going to bring them to the promised land, you know, to, to that outcome that we say that we're going to help them get achieve. So in that, in that process, if you can, if you can name it, if you can come up with pillars, if you can have very specific things that you do, then you get to like seed that in the context of your thing. So I love to start with threes. You know, when you asked me about podcasting and you asked me that question, I said, there's three things you need to think about. I'll tell you another secret. <laughs> I did not know which three things I was going to say. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's great. But uh, what, what that saying three things did is I have a million things I want to share with you, mm -hmm. but that just makes my brain go, oh, Sugary, we got three. Okay, girlfriend, go find three. You know, and three is enough that it sounds like it is uh, thorough, but it's not too many. At four, you know, research in the brain says we can hold between three and five pieces of data in our short term memory, but really, mm -hmm. It's three. <laughs> That's interesting you say that because I, we have the four things that stop podcasters from getting started and I can always forget the fourth one. <laughs> I can get the first three, no problem. Right. <laughs> Number four, I was like, what was that one again? <laughs> yeah. So just stick that third one underneath or that fourth one underneath one of the three. Yeah. So, so you <laughs> want to have at least three different key points that you want to share with people. And mm -hmm. um, so those are the three overarching things that you want. And underneath those, if it's a long podcast, then you can go into a little bit more detail, you know, and particularly when you are doing podcasts and they're not seeing you. So very often when I'm teaching, I'm writing on a, I'm writing on a board, you know, cause my goal is to, to really have people walk away with something. Mm -hmm. So, so you want to use some of the, the like adult learning concepts. And one of them is the threes. Another one is using rhetorical devices. And that can be something as simple as uh, like starting your process with the same letter. It's called alliteration. So my, mm -hmm. pro my process and the stage authority formula is to embody, energize, and engage. Mm -hmm. And I came up with that because I, I was like, okay, what can I do that is gonna make it land and be, and be sticky, right? So I had to come up with, uh, you know, the first one was embody because I'm all about embodiment. So I'm like, okay, what are two more E's, <laughs> you know? So it's like having the three, you got, yeah. you structure it, but it comes out in a way that people will retain it mm -hmm. and then you'll remember it. So you don't have to script things. You go, oh, that's right. It's a three. It's, it begins with E. Okay. And then, you know, you'll, it will come to your brain as you're saying it, even mm -hmm. if you're all like fluster bustered. Yeah, amazing. I did that and I didn't even know it. Yeah. <laughs> I had a co-working space and it was create, connect, and collaborate was our tagline. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, perfect. And then probably it, if you haven't been even saying that for a while and you and you say the first one, you know there's three and you know it begins with C, you're going to come up with the third one, Yeah. you know, and the second one. That's great. So adult learning concepts. Okay, that's really great. I love that. 
making our propriety, a proprietary process too, should we be naming that similarly, like how you had the five Ps, similar sort of idea? Yeah, so, so start with like, if you, the easiest way, Michelle, to create your process is to take a sticky and just think of the person that comes in in the pain. Okay, so I'll talk about Nettie. So she came in, she had been a professional speaker for a long time and was making a, she was very successful at it. But every time she went to go speak, she would freak out and she'd call this other coach that actually referred her to me and, you know, had to get literally walked off the ledge. So she wasn't feeling confident and she was going to be in front of a room of generals. So how can I get Medi to being able to just kill it when she goes and speak to the generals? What do I need to do? So she's got to learn how to have confidence. She needs to learn how to use her voice more powerfully. She needs to learn how to stand correctly and take the stage. She needs to be able to master her gestures and her eye contact and what she's wearing. So, you know, you take all these different things. If somebody's a podcaster and you're teaching them how to do, how to be a powerful, successful podcaster and they just started and then you want to take them to being where they're, you know, dynamite what are the things they need to do and so you just put those all on a sticky board and then you start to group them and try to group them into three overarching categories you know you got it you've got your technology you've got your message and then you've got your marketing just for example mm -hmm. and if you wanted you could put those into three m's you know your mark your your message your marketing and your um monetization Maybe. monetization yeah <laughs> monetization or mm -hmm. you know, something for technology that begins with an m your materials mm -hmm. you know so so then you take those and then underneath those like one of so energize uh, embody energize engage the embody piece mm -hmm. there are seven different elements to it mm -hmm. one of which is voice so I, when I'm trying to remember what the heck I'm teaching on voice, like you asked me a question, uh, I didn't teach this, the voice part of my class was the last time I taught it was two weeks ago. So it's not like, bah, bah, but I know it's five Ps. So it's just as much for me mm. as it is for everybody else. And nine times out of 10, I'll get all five, but sometimes I'll just get four and then I'll be, uh, and then by the time I've said the four, the fifth one will like come into my head or it won't like we make mistakes. <laughs> That's so great. That's a really nice thing. You know, it's funny. I've had so many people explain how to create a signature talk or how to break down pieces, but the way you just explained it is probably the best I've ever heard anyone explain how to like break down things in some really easy chunks and propriety, make those processes and frameworks in your business for what you do. And that was great. Thank you so much. That was a really good nugget. You guys hope you're listening really carefully to Dr. Cynthia. She's full of great knowledge. I love it. And how did you get started teaching people how to, how to have this presence and stage presence, um, in, on, in their business? Well, it's, it's really interesting, Michelle, because I have been uh, in healthcare for 30 years. And at one point my husband and I were able to retire and we sold our practice and we bought an RV and we were going to travel around the country with our kids and do homeschooling. And, um, and we, so we had this great plan. Like we all have plans, like before COVID, we all had plans. Right. Mm. And, uh, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. Mm. And so for a year and a half, she, I watched her fade away and ultimately she passed and during that time it's like it was so painful because my doctor's head was trying to help her and fix mm -hmm. her but my really my daughter's heart was just breaking and I remember very clearly at her funeral she wanted her brother to speak for her and it was like uh, it was really painful for me because I wanted to get up and communicate how much she meant to me and just as important, I wanted to be able to help the people that were there that loved her mm -hmm. kind of process and just celebrate her. And so, you know, uh, they didn't ask me to. And, um, and in fact, they wouldn't let me. Mm -hmm. and, and part of what was really painful about that is that I had always wanted to be able to be a public speaker. And when I watched my uncle um, get up there and, and just do such a beautiful job, 
it's like in my mind, I'm thinking if, if I could get up and speak, then and communicate like that and make a difference for people, then like everything would be handled. Not just because I could, you know, for business purposes or communication purposes, but, but really the me that would have been able to do that would have been the person that I aspire to be. Mm. And um, so because everything kind of fell apart, that was during the crash, it was 2006. And so all our best laid plans, the economy tanked and everything that we had worked for for 20 years just kind of blew up. I, we had to go back into practice. And one of the ways that I wanted to get good at um, was speaking and to go to companies and do lunch and learns and things like that. And so I thought, okay, well, I know I'll join a Toastmasters class. <laughs> my mother, honestly, ironically, had always been trying to get me to go to Toastmasters. And I, and I hated it because like you go there and everybody like, hello, I'm Dr. Cynthia. It's um, great to be here. And thank you very much. And they're all what I call like snappy doodle, like super polished. And they got their voice going on. Long story short, I, um, I really loved the body language part. And mm -hmm. being a chiropractor, what I realized, people would come up to me and say, wow, Dr. Cynthia, you have so much presence. And in the meantime, Michelle, you gotta know, I was just wanting to throw up <laughs> like two days ahead of time oh. and two days afterwards and for a speech in front of three people for three minutes. It was like freak idyllic. But then when I just started to learn more about it and realize so much of it comes down to our instrument, down to our body. And that, and that connection comes to our body. It's like, you know this, because you hear you that connection in the voice or that connection with the eye contact or that connection that you feel when you see somebody standing powerfully, like you feel comfortable, you feel like you can trust them. Mm -hmm. And so just over the years, it's been a decade now, I've just had the pleasure of working with a lot of really powerful people and helping them go from good to great or really honestly sometimes from great to even greater and also people who just are just freaked out about speaking the benefit you guys have as podcasters is for the most part it's significantly less terrifying <laughs> than getting on a stage of you know 200 people or in my case, three, three people. <laughs> it sure is a lot less terrifying than being yeah. on stage. And this way we get to practice our craft before we do go on stage. That's amazing. That's a, that's a great story. Uh, amazing how, you know, it, it, the fears that come up when you're about to speak and, uh, you know, just changing a few things, how much more you can elevate your presence to your audience. It's incredible. Uh, Dr. Cynthia, I want to thank you so much for spending so much time with us today. We've learned so many great nuggets from you. Um, I really want our audience to be able to reach out to you. So where can we find more information about what you're doing, what you're up to, how to connect with you more? The best thing that, you know, as I recommended, that everybody should have a signature talk in their pocket and the mm -hmm. elements of the signature talk, whether they do it on stage or when they're being interviewed as a podcast. So what I thought would be helpful for them is to I uh, put together a video that goes over how to craft a signature talk mm -hmm. and, you know, the things that you need in it and the flow that you want. And I've got a work sheet with it. And so I put together a little video that I think would be very helpful so they can get that at Stage Authority. Dot, oh, stageauthorityformula.com backslash signature talk. Awesome. That sounds great. You guys make sure you go check that out. Reach out to Dr. Cynthia. She is amazing. And I will look forward to hearing more of your adventures and going to check out your signature talk and working on my own <laughs> when I go and speak to other people. I'm always trying to figure out what story to pull out of my head. It would be nice to have a few that I can pick from that are concrete in the processes and how to explain what we do in our business too. I think that's so valuable. So thank you so much for sharing all that with us today. And uh, thanks for, for joining us. My pleasure, Michelle. You're, you do an awesome job. And I am excited that more people are out podcasting, sharing their message. It's really important now more than ever. Absolutely. I agree. Amplify you. Make sure you follow Dr. Cynthia. Again, it was stageauthorityformula.com forward slash signature, signature talk. talk. <laughs> right? Okay. Got it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you again soon. All right, Michelle. Thank you.